Yeah, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Denali, aka Don Squally, back at you with another video. Uh, so basically, it's been about two and a half years since I've owned this car. Uh, so I just thought that I'd make a complete list of all the stuff that I did to the, this car so far. Obviously, there's been a lot of trial and error, a lot of parts that have gone on and came off. Uh, but I'm just going to go over the list of the car as it sits right now. All the stuff that I've done to it. It was a bone stock 3.5 SE when I first got it. And uh, as you can see, it looks a little bit different. So we're going to get right into it, man. All right, right off the bat, wheels and tires. That's a stock set of 350Z wheels and uh wheels <laughs> the tires are michelins up front uh goodyear's in the back 225 45s all around to keep a nice flush look um and then i custom painted them gold obviously uh if you guys have been following me you will have seen that video and uh hopefully enjoyed it next up we have the ser front and rear end conversion now uh, the front bumper i got directly from nissan the rear bumper i got off a of code red that a buddy of mine was parting out uh, so obviously with that i had to get the ser rear spoiler now um I just got the whole trunk and rear spoiler. I got also got the spoiler from a part out, but it was so difficult to get off of the trunk. My buddy just said, screw it, take the whole trunk. So I do have a complete SER rear end on this car um, to go with the front end. Uh, then I blacked out all the trim. Uh, so I also acquired the blackout trim around the windows from the SER part out. Uh, then I just plasti dipped around the stock grill uh, just to give it a little more sleek look and I think that it really cleans the car up. I do have a couple videos online with the chrome trim still around the windows with the gold wheels and the SER front bumper and I have to say it does look kind of tacky and a couple people definitely brought that to my attention. Uh, then with the lights man I just kept it simple. I had a couple opportunities to acquire some SER rear taillights for a very small price but to be honest I like the blacked out look of the VHT nightshade. Now I did a couple light coats uh, so that you can see, uh, still see the light through it. So they do look a little bit red in certain uh, sunlight, but I don't mind it because uh, it's, you know safety first. And I didn't want it to be completely black, so I have risked somebody rear-ending me. Um, and I did a couple light coats of gloss on it just so it matches the finish of the paint a little. For the front end lights, I did a 10,000K HID kit on the front, uh, the headlights, and uh, 3,000K yellow uh, xenon bulbs just in the fog lights. Now the reason that I didn't go HIDs all the way around is because the HIDs uh, are kind of a pain in the ass. You tend to go through ballast and bulbs quite a bit, at least once a year, give or take. Um, so I just wanted to keep it simple with the fogs and not have an extra set of bulbs and ballast that I have to worry about. Next up, we have the custom made front lip, man. Now basically what I did is I made myself a nice cutout and uh, I got myself a shop here locally to cut me out a, um, a custom splitter from a nice sheet of plastic. Now, uh, uh, you may have seen the video online of that. Uh, I did end up selling a couple of them online. It's not really a profit, as profitable of a business as I thought it was gonna be. And then I went with 15% tint because obviously when I got the car, it wasn't tinted. Now, the place that I went to get my tint offered a 30% tint, 15% tint, or 5% tint. Now, 20 is the maximum uh, that you're allowed to go or the minimum I guess however you want to look at it uh, here in Ontario now I ended up going with the 15 uh, just because I thought 30 would be a little too light for my liking and to be honest I haven't been asked any questions or pulled over or had any problems with the 15 Okay, and as far as the engine goes, man, now first things first, I did a custom made K&N intake. Now the only thing really K&N about it is the intake itself. Um, I used a few stock parts of the, like uh, the stock math and a little piece of the plastic uh, that connects to the stock intake, intake tubing. And then I just added in a few uh, chrome tube pieces that I got from a local automotive shop. It was pretty much the cheapest thing that I could have done at the time. To be honest, it sounds great, it serves its purpose, so I just don't have any reason to get another brand name intake. Uh, this one's been serving me quite well. And then we have the Racing Line motor mount inserts. Now this is a fairly cheap mod to buy. Uh, they're only about, you can buy one for 25 or you can buy both for 40. Uh, 
very cheap the only problem is getting them in there it is kind of a pain in the ass uh, for me I had them installed in the winter times not something I wanted to dick around with so I just took it to my mechanic had them install it now um, this is a great mod if uh, if your motor mounts are kind of shot even if you do have stock motor mounts that are brand new uh, the engine still could tend to shift and uh, these just help you know help the shifting bring the shifting to a minimum and then we did the Cosmo racing underdrive lightweight underdrive pulley now if you have a stereo system in your car I wouldn't recommend doing an underdrive you can definitely go lightweight but I would stay stock size basically because uh, what the underdrive pulley does it takes some of the power that would be going to your battery and uh, uh, transfers it into your into your engine uh, theoretically now obviously that's not exactly the case but it uh, just it spins the alternator pulley slightly slower and spins the rest of the pulleys a little bit faster um, just putting a bit more of the power into a different area of the engine now um, as far as lightweight goes I would definitely recommend doing a lightweight if you're not going to go underdrive just because that stock crank is very heavy and for the engine to turn that whole thing around uh, it really does take a lot out of the engine so lightweight is definitely the way to go um, I'm completely happy again this is a mod that I was not really comfortable installing myself so I did have my mechanic installed and then next up we have the grounding kit now the grounding kit is a uh, kind of a simple thing to install I did install this myself uh, I have the big four which is basically um, alternator uh, intake manifold block and I believe transmission now there are five and six point grounding kits for me in my situation the uh, the four was perfect um, I did install it myself now this mod is not going to give you any horsepower it's basically just going to help your electrical flow a little bit better uh, your lights are not going to dim on a heavy base or heavy load with the stereo uh, your stereo you're going to find is going to be a lot clearer um, so as far as performance goes not a big mod but definitely something to do if you're having electrical um, issues or you're finding that it's your electrical system is just not powerful enough in your car next up we have the throttle body spacer now this is one of those mods that's controversial now a lot of people say that they don't do anything uh, the main mod or the main reason for a throttle body spacer is to basically keep your throttle body away from the intake manifold to keep it as cool as possible uh, now a lot of people say that these do absolutely nothing to be honest I haven't had any problems with mine uh, so for me it's been a, a good mod and uh, something that I would recommend uh, some people may have other other opinions but uh, my personal experience so next up we have the NWP block off plate now this is one of those mods that I would recommend you do first thing if you have a VQ 35 powered Altima Maxima it's uh, one of those things that's cheap easy to do it's not they don't advertise any number gains however it's just gonna re help you reach your peak horsepower a little bit sooner in the power band and that brings us to exhaust now the first thing that I did with this car uh, as far as exhaust goes is I got the cheapest set of Gretti knockoff mufflers that that I could find online uh, they're straight through mufflers I basically installed those um, and when I did that I deleted the resonator which basically uh, sits in the middle of the car it's kind of like a uh, your first muffler and then it runs into a V and then into your secondary mufflers now I got rid of that strictly for sound uh, a couple years later I was looking for more performance as opposed to sound so I ended up getting the racing line free cats and Y pipe um, now this is a, a great mod if you have the money and you 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 can afford it I would recommend it if not definitely look into headers they're a little bit more tricky as far as install goes and uh, check engine lights uh, you're recommended to do a tune afterwards if you don't want to look at a check engine light but if you don't want to deal with that you have a few extra bucks to spend get the racing line uh, pre cats and Y pipe now the I haven't taken it to the track I haven't dynoed it so I don't know if it's any better than it was before judging by the butt dyno and the incredible torque steer that the car has right now definitely definitely a great mod and I would highly recommend it um, I've been real happy with it and uh, 
it sounds great. Alrighty, suspension wise, we are sitting on Racing Line Springs and KYB GR2 shocks and struts. Now, I was sitting on a set of D2 coilovers. Uh, the ride was a little bit stiff for me. I didn't really have the patience to uh, adjust it to my liking. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna get a set of springs that are tried and true. Uh, the, the ride height is, I wish it was a little bit lower in the back, However, uh, for what it is and how it rides, I don't really bottom out that often. Uh, occasionally I do. I've slammed frame a few times. It's mostly the Y pipe that gets nicked up, but uh, that's about it, man. Uh, other than that, they ride great. They look great. Uh, I would highly recommend them for sure uh, if you want to lower your car but don't want to get too aggressive. And to stop all this madness, uh, basically I have cross-drilled uh, and slotted rotors. Uh, I had, did have a full set of ceramic pads all around but I ended up switching my front pads to a Wagner OE spec uh, just recently because the front pads were wearing down. It's starting to give me a little bit of noise issue and vibrating. Uh, so currently uh, ceramic pads at the back, Wagner OE spec uh, pads in the front cross-drilled slotted rotors all around um, some guys do the 300 zx caliper change uh, or 350z caliper change for me i didn't really need that man this they stopped great as it is i just wanted something that was going to uh, not fade when i was using them a lot and uh, something i was a little more reliable so that's why i went this route and last but not least interior man so obviously you guys know because i did the ser conversion on the outside i do have the ser uh i did get the full ser interior uh the rear seats are just gray stitched uh so i didn't need the back seats the back seats are stock se seats uh not much different except for the gray st stitching but I do have the front SER seats in there, uh, which look great. Obviously, if you're doing the SER conversion, it's something that you're going to want to do because let's face it, man, if people are walking past your car, they see it's an SER and they look and <laughs> they don't see the seats. That's obviously one of the dead giveaways uh, that you're going to have. Now, don't get it twisted. If anybody asks me or comments on my car says that's a dope SER, I do tell them this is a stock SE and it usually brings up more conversation uh, than if it were an actual SER. Um, so with that, I had recently made a trip out to the junkyard. Some of you may have watched that video because a lot of people have so far. Uh, and I did end up getting the gauge pod for 20 bucks now. Um, I ordered a set of, uh, of gauges to fit in here that were aftermarket i'm still currently waiting on those uh, so when they do come in i will show you guys how to get them working and how to install them in these gauge pods but for the time being uh, this was just a little something to to give it that authentic ser touch and uh, last but not least you guys know that i'm not a big stereo guy i kind of grew out of the stereo phase in my life uh, so basically all that i have in here is just an auxiliary port so that i can connect my iphone uh, to the stereo and play all my music off my phone. Actually, this isn't my iPhone. I have an iPod in there that uh, that I use, or an iPhone 4 that I use my iPod. That do doesn't matter, man. Anyways, that's the iPad. Uh, I forget the model number, um, but I do have a video of that on my channel, so if you do want to see how I installed that, uh, let me know. It serves its purpose, man. I was just getting sick of dicking around with CDs, and like I said, kind of grew out of the aftermarket stereo stage of my life, so uh, this was perfect for me, 100 bucks installed, no problem. Uh, so if you want to see that video or any other video of any of the stuff that I mentioned in this video, um, any of the installs, anything that went on uh, that I did with this car is online on YouTube. So if you guys want to see anything that I'm, like I said, anything I mentioned in this video, uh, just drop a comment and I will do my best to point you in the right direction. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, man, please subscribe because there's all kinds of new Ultima videos and car related videos coming out all the time. Uh, I try my best to keep active on YouTube as much as possible and keep the content flowing for you guys. And obviously, if you like this video at any point in time, man, please give it a thumbs up because that helps me out, gets me noticed, gets my videos noticed. And, uh, you know, when I'm happy, I make videos for you guys that hopefully make you happy. You know what I mean? So uh, with that being said, I'm just going to finish off uh, by taking a couple of the shots that you will have already seen in this video. Uh, so it's your boy on Squally. Let me know what you guys think of the build, man. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions of the directions that you want me to take it at this point man and i just want to give a big thanks to all of the subscribers all of my friends uh my family that i have met 
over the years of having this car, man, because when I had this car, when I first got this car, man, my, my YouTube channel had under a thousand subscribers and now there's over 4,000 subscribers and I'm still getting subscribers every single day, man. So I just want to give a big thanks to you guys, man. Uh, you have no idea how much it means to me that you guys uh, comment on my videos and message me all the time. And uh, a lot of the guys that are local that want to come and hang out with me, man, we're gonna get we're gonna get to it man it's just it's been a hectic summer and uh i'm sorry if i haven't gotten to you guys already uh so with that being said it's your boy don squally uh thanks for watching man and we are gonna see you guys at the next one man that's it